Hello, it's Subway Pont Free. Can I take your order, please? Speaking to me now, Kamal and boxer Angelo Dragoni. Angelo, uh, good to see you, mate. Um, you recently had the, the, the biggest fight of your career to date. Uh, boxer, a big Sky Sports card. What was your recollection of the fight now? What's your thoughts on it? Okay, back. Yeah, obviously, it was a great experience to be on the, on the live telly on Sky Sports, biggest platform uh, you can get. Like, um, it was a great fight. Uh, it was a close fight, close battle. Um, unfortunately, it uh, broke my jaw in the last round, the last minute, so it was kind of uh, in survival mode. It's good that I couldn't uh, finish the round as uh, strong as I usually do. Um, but um, yeah, it was a close fight. I think it's um, um, you know, standing me in good stead for the future, and hopefully, I get another opportunity. So, the fight, like you said, was really close up until maybe the last round or two. Um, what, what, what point did your, your jaw uh, go or get broken? Do you feel was it in the final round or the round yeah, before? The final round it was literally when I watched it back, as you could see the last minute. Um, I just it, it, during the fight because it was so quiet as well. I could just hear that uh, crack it, noise in my jaw, like, and I just knew I fucking never felt that before, like. <laughs> um, and just I went in survival mode. There's a bit. Um, Unsure what to do really because if I threw a punch, I didn't want to land another one on the jaw. Um, realistically, if I had a longer, a few more rounds, I would have taken the maybe gather my thoughts and maybe I'd look for some advice for the corner. Uh, but I just went into survival mode and just there's no way I was taking any live on Sky Sports, uh, especially with just a minute left. I didn't you know I mean, but um, like I said, it was a great experience. And um, you know, I give um, Dante Dixon his toughest fight, t toughest fight of his. Career so far because he's really boxed four journeymen and stopped the wall, and everyone thought he'd stop me. Like, but um, um, it wasn't the case. Like, so f for most normal people, w w when you say I, I can hear my jaw getting broken, and I, and I, and I want to fight on, yeah. so it sounds crazy. Um, yeah. What makes fighters like yourself different to your average guy in the street? I don't know. I think it's just like uh, probably that like Welsh warrior kind of thing, and I do not mean. And just like just to be on Sky Sports, and you know, what I mean, I, I could, could give you that chance. It's a once in a lifetime chance, really, and it's you know what I mean. So there's no way I'm getting remembered for the guy who don't did the Dixon stop in the last round. I rather had more publicity again of losing. Do you know what I mean? Because it survived to the end, and uh, just my mentality, my drive to keep pushing and towards to the final bell. You know, I was still going forward even though I broke my jaw. Like, and did uh, he catch you any shots after your jaw had gone? No, I did. to be fair, when I was looking back, I just took up and defended. And, you know, we held on to him and uh, kind of used my experience um, and just uh, yeah, just dragged it out to the last minute. I knew I was behind uh, going into the last round, and you know, what I mean, I just didn't want any more damage to the jaw just to, to see the final bell, really. And what did you learn as a boxer from the that whole experience boxing on Matchroom, boxing on Sky, obviously? Suffering the, the broken jaw as well, probably facing the, the biggest puncher you you faced to date. Yeah. Um, yeah, just an overall experience, really being in the bubble, um, just being I felt like a bit of a celebrity for the week to be honest with all the cameras and just uh, just the whole experience was uh, great and obviously standing me in good stead for future future fights and if I get another opportunity, I'd be more ready for it. You know what I mean? Um, obviously, being behind closed doors is a lot different. So it's a new experience. Um, I, it was fine till the. Uh, the, the music went on for, to work to, for my ring entrance um, and just like the, 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 the no crowd, the no noise of the crowd was really strange like I was focused like but it just had the little thing of uh, it just it just didn't know where to walk, I didn't know, it was weird like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but um, like I said, I, I, I did give my all in the fight and um, I definitely uh, gave myself a good performance anyway. Could you hear the trainer's instructions a lot more clear with no crowd? I mean, it sounds an obvious question, but yeah, could you hear Richie? Do, well, Richie's loud anyway, <laughs> but uh, you definitely could hear um, you're more vocal in the corner, shouting, you know what I mean, uh, shouting instructions more. Obviously, you only get that with, with your minute rest in between rounds normally, innit? You could hear like, people shouting here and there, like, but um, you definitely could hear them a bit more clearly. Yeah. And it's a bit of a stupid question. I, I saw it someone put on Facebook or one of the boxing forums. Could you hear your opponent's trainer as well shout advice to him? Um, didn't really pay attention to that, man, but obviously you could hear the, the coaches uh, shouting. Um, but um, yeah, obviously you could hear just, just coaches shouting, yeah. 
but um, we just waited for that roar, to the roar of the crowd, like, you know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was really strange, like. Because most of your fights, well, all your fights, actually, you always have a big crowd, you always take a big, well, two or three buses down from West Wales, and uh, I suppose from that to deadly silent, or more or less silence. Exactly, I always remember, go back to the twos fight, um, in that 10th round, the roar um, of the crowd going into the last round, there's eleven atmosphere, like, and I... I just felt on my toes that I could do another 10 rounds. I mean, it does give you that uh, the energy and the boost in between I mean, when the going gets tough and I mean, the crowd does cheer you on. So if anybody's fighting behind closed doors um, in the upcoming weeks, like, it is a lot different. So try and prepare yourself and focus a bit more on the, on the job a bit more. Like, do you know what I mean? So what, what's next for you, Angelo? We're still in the lockdown period. Hopefully we're going to get out of it in the next few months. But what's, what's the plans for you going forward? Um, plans going forward, obviously my, uh, my girlfriend is due uh, May the 23rd, so I'm excited, that's the most important thing for me now, um, get the baby here safe and well, um, and then I'm just starting to get back myself into training, a bit of routine now, so I'm kind of get half ready, um, and then we're looking to have a homecoming show, uh, maybe um, beginning of August, uh, that'll be the nice first one back to for my fans to get back, I feel like I deserve like a bit of a Six round and not like a walk over fight, but something just to get the crowd back and test the draw out um, and get another win on the board and hopefully push to a Welsh title towards the end of the year. Have you done any sparring uh, since y your fight? No, I haven't done any sparring yet. Um, we, we have to leave it for three months first. I think it's coming up to three months now. I'll just get myself fit first and do you know I mean? I don't know any rest to spar really yet. Then I'll just get myself fit. Put on about uh, a little bit of a stone or two anyway. So I uh, get my weight down again and uh, start enjoying the training, get myself back into routine, and then uh, we can look to do some sparring then. Has your jaw changed shape at all? Or can you feel the actual break? <laughs> no, I, I don't know, when it's cold, like, it does feel a bit uh, numb sometimes, but I think it's still uh, um, the anaesthetic. It take, they said um, the doctor, the surgeon said it might take about six months for the anaesthetic to wear off. Um, so. Um, if it's just it's just progress and that, do you know what I mean? So I think in another month or two, uh, be back to back to new, I think. And you, you've already boxed on a number of uh, TV shows on S4C, and you've done a few online shows. Um, but obviously, Sky Sports is a massive platform, probably the biggest yeah. sports platform in Britain. How has the fan reaction been to you boxing on Sky Sports? Also, also your kids as well. You got two other children. I feel like uh, like again, my platform is raised again. My stocks raised. Obviously, if I went in then just uh, going to give a journeyman style, just tucked up and give give Dante Dixon six rounds kind of thing. And if it didn't, nobody would notice. We had that kind of uh, warrior performance, and uh, definitely the stock raised. And we had Eddie and Billy Joe Saunders mess me after to, to, uh, to congratulate me for a good performance. Even Dante Dixon said afterwards, like it's the hardest fight he's had. He's known in the amateurs to stop a lot of his opponents and stuff. So, um, I mean, another two or three fights down the line, perhaps you can do it again. Um, I'd be well open for that fight. Um, so, just waiting for more opportunities. I think you put on Facebook or on YouTube the other day a fight from your amateur days. Yeah. And um, you, I know obviously you, you'll expect you to progress and get better over time, but you, you do really seem like a totally different boxer now. Yeah, I think I still got the, the aggression and the come forward thing, but um, if you look at my, uh, we're just swinging like a rusty gate tonight. <laughs> but um, it's, uh, yeah, to be honest, the last uh, year I've got to give credit to Jason, I've got full time with Jason, and he's got me, um, you know, we move him ahead, the more rolling shots, slipping shots, and we're working on a lot more different um, techniques, so I've got to give full credit to Jason, he's really um, up to get my, my game, and um, you can see the performances. Um, I'm looking into a better shape, a little bit more calmer, and working off my job and stuff like that more, you know what I mean? So, I'm improving. And you had a pretty tough session this morning, r running up and down the, the road outside the gym. Looked yeah. quite, quite tough, quite, quite warm as well, actually. Yeah, it's nice, nice to get outside, and obviously, um, for those that are rich, Richie's got quite a big stable of fighters, uh, managing some fighters, but we were kind of all juggled about, like Newport, Cardiff, Swansea. Uh, even Snathy, and um, it's nice to have everybody uh, together in, in, in the gym. So hopefully we could do a regular thing, and uh, do you know what I mean? Have a team team morale and all that. Do you know what I mean? When Richie kept on asking you to do more and more things and asking you to do press ups, I can see Richie looking over there now. What, what, what was your, what were you thinking? What, what would you like to do to Richie when he was asking you to do more running and do more tossing the tire up? He's just a prick, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, like that. No, to be fair, like I said, Jason's quite uh, more technical and stuff. Richie is quite uh, an old school trainer. Um, and so I do enjoy uh, kind of both views of things and all that. Um, obviously, in the corner, Richie goes in the corner. Um, Jason's more um, kind of secondary, he's got a secondary license, I mean. Um, so it's nice to have the both views. Um, obviously, I do a lot of training with Jason, do all the technical stuff, but it is good to have the old school type training as well. So I quite like that yeah, in myself. like. And uh, jokes aside, it, was, it seemed a good camaraderie amongst all the boxers and yeah. obviously Richie and uh, Jason as well. Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, I mean, that's what it's about. Can we go to like Gary Locke's gym or um, up in St. Joe's team? They're, they're all um, in the gym day in, day out. It's quite difficult for us. We're all, you got to remember as well, we've all got our full time jobs, families, and we're not living in the gym. Like It's hard to get sponsorships to, uh, for, for you to go full time. Do you know what I mean? So it's very difficult. Um, so yeah, it's just juggling everything about, but it's good to have a good uh, team around you today and uh, hopefully we could do, uh, be a regular thing, you know. And during the lockdown period, you've been doing a lot of personal training. I've watched you online. Do you want to give that a shout out? Yeah, so we do uh, a lot of uh, Zoom classes at the minute. So we've got uh, up to about 10 classes a week just for £10. Do you know what I mean? It's affordable for everybody. They, they, they don't have to leave the house. It's like a high, high intensity workout and everyone's really enjoying them. It's, um, picking up every week um, and it's been quite successful so I'm going to keep it going even though, uh, even when the gyms um, are open because I've got clients now from London, Cardiff, uh, obviously Swansea and obviously locally Carmarvin and Slaffy so it's just kind of branched me out a bit more like obviously if you had a gym session people from London are not going to travel down you know, so it's adding something different to my, uh, my coaching armour you know what I mean? How do people contact you regarding the Zoom classes? Uh, just on Facebook, really, Andrew Dragoni, or Instagram, Andrew Dragoni Boxing. Um, just from all over social media. Probably do about 10 posts a day, as you can see. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can find me online uh, somewhere, just on social media. <laughs> and have you got any sponsors or fans you'd like to particularly thank? Um, I did have my T-shirt on uh, earlier, so I'll just shout out uh, my sponsors. This is from my last fight, it was. So we've got um, RCS, uh, Crack and Clothing, in um, Llanelli, we've got Keith Wills who's been um, with me from the start for supplements, CT1 from uh, Carmarvin, and then we've got uh, Trojan and Stebeneef um, Sports Bar in Llanelli, and we've got uh, WR Windows, uh, window company in Llanelli, and we've got uh, T&M Group, it's like uh, garden maintenance and uh, other things um, in Llanelli as well, so it's a mixture of Llanelli and Carmarvin sponsors, so thank you very much for them. Um, and obviously, doing the lockdown and stuff, my medical run out, so all these uh, chipped in for my medical, obviously, is a cost. So, thank you very much for doing that. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had my fight um, on Sky Sports. So, thank you, guys. Okay, uh, cheers, Andrew. Thank Great you to see you. Um, you're good to see you in person. We know we've done a few online interviews. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was thinking this earlier on the way here. It's either you or Reese Edwards has got to be the, the, the boxer I've interviewed the most on my YouTube yeah, channel. <laughs> I think, think Reese is maybe slightly ahead because I interviewed yeah. him a few times in the amateurs, but you've you got to be a close second. Yeah. Uh, the one come a second to him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cheers, Angela. Hello, it's Subway Pontypridd. Can I take your order, please?